Hey everyone, welcome to the channel! This video is a quick tutorial on how to set up the DS and DSi emulator Melon DS. We'll start by going over the basic setup that's needed to get games running, and then I want to get into how to configure the network settings and get this emulator set up for local and online multiplayer. To get started, you will need to get your hands on a few things such as the BIOS and firmware files for your console as well as a dump of your NAND if you plan on using DSi emulation. I can't provide these files for you, but you can obtain them by dumping them from your own console. However, the steps to do so vary depending on what type of DS you have, so I'm not going to get into how to dump these files in this video. You'll also need to get your hands on Melon DS, which you can obtain from the Melon DS website or from the link below. Just note that at the time of making this video, DSi emulation and the JIT recompiler are not available in any release that's on the Melon DS website, so you'll want to use the build that's in the description, at least until a version greater than 0.8.3 is released on the Melon DS website. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button if you want to see other tutorials like this, along with monthly update recaps and all sorts of other emulation related content. Once you have the files, you can organize them however you'd like, but I recommend putting them in the same directory so that everything is in one place. Having them all in the same directory is a requirement if you're using a stable release of version 0.8.3 or older from the Melon DS website, but it's no longer necessary with the most recent builds of this emulator, such as the one in the description. Another thing to note if you're using an older build is that you'll also need to rename your DS system files but you'll see a pop-up with the appropriate names if this is the case. Once you have your files in place, go ahead and open up the Melon DS application. The first thing you want to do is tell Melon DS where your DS system files are, so go up to Config and open MU Settings. Head over to the BIOS Files tab and click the first Browse button and search for your DS ARM 9 BIOS file. If your files are named similarly to mine, it will be called BIOSNDS9.bin. Just make sure that you select the one that says DS and not DSi. It's an easy mistake to make, and the emulator won't function if these files get mixed up. Once you have the first BIOS file in place, go ahead and repeat the process for your ARM7 BIOS, as well as your DS firmware and your DSi files if you have them. After all of your system files are in place, move over to the General tab and select which console you'd like to emulate from the drop-down menu here. It's worth mentioning that at the time of making this video, many of the DSi's features are still unimplemented, so currently, DSi-enhanced games will either run in DS mode or show an error screen on boot. That said, you can still explore the DSi home menu and quite a bit of DSiWare works, although not every title will boot and some games will have graphical issues as you can see here. It's also worth mentioning that save states are currently not working in DSi mode, so just keep this in mind if you're in the habit of using them. Moving along, you can enable the Boot Game Directly option to skip over the home screen in DS mode and boot right into a game, but it also currently does not work in DSi mode. Once you're set here, you may also want to check out the JIT recompiler that's in the CPU Emulation tab especially if you're on a lower-end system. This feature can provide a decent boost to performance as you can see here, however there is a chance that it can also cause some instability. You can adjust the block size here so if you notice any issues that can't be replicated without the JIT recompiler, you can try reducing it a bit to see if that solves the problem. Next you'll need to set up the controls, so head back up to Config and select Input and Hotkeys. This is a pretty straightforward interface. You can map a controller by selecting it from the joysticks drop-down, then just click in the field next to the button that you'd like to map, and press the button on your controller that you'd like to map it to. Once you've got your controller or keyboard mapped, you can also map a few hotkeys for things like fast-forwarding emulation or using the microphone. Speaking of the microphone, you may also want to configure how it works in the audio settings. You can allow Melon DS to access your system's microphone if you'd like, but setting it to blow is enough for most games. When you're finished here, let's take a look at the video settings. I recommend setting the renderer to OpenGL since that provides resolution scaling and the best performance on most systems. However, if you notice any graphical issues, you can try switching to the software renderer. The software renderer should be a bit more accurate, resulting in fewer graphical issues, although performance on lower-end systems may be impacted a bit. 
There's also currently no resolution scaling for the software renderer, although this is in the works. Nonetheless, you may want to play around with both just to see what works best on a game-by-game -game basis. There's also an option here for VSync, which you should enable if you experience any screen tearing while using this emulator. Last of all, let's take a closer look at the Wi-Fi settings. This part is entirely optional, but I do recommend setting up Wi-Fi to get the most out of Melon DS. This emulator has fairly decent support for Wi-Fi and wireless communications, allowing multiple instances of Melon DS to communicate with each other on the same machine or on separate machines across LAN or the internet. However, this feature is still a work in progress, so it may not work with all games, and you may experience some lag or instability while playing online or through wireless communications. You'll also need to install WinPCAP or NPCAP and have a hardwired Ethernet connection in order to use the DS's Wi-Fi and connect with other Melon DS users online. Again, all of the new features will be merged into a stable release in the near future, so versions greater than 0.8.3 should have DSi support and the JIT recompiler, along with working wireless communications. But at the time of making this video, these features don't exist in the same build. And like I mentioned before, if you are using an older build, you'll want to make sure that your DS system files are in your Melon DS directory and named like you see here. With that out of the way, once you've installed WinPCAP or NPCAP, head back up to the config dropdown and open up Wi-Fi settings. If you plan on using Melon DS on multiple PCs through a LAN connection, you'll need to enable this bind socket to any address option. Without it enabled, you'll only be able to use wireless communication between multiple instances of Melon DS on a single PC. Right below this is the option for direct mode, which must be enabled to allow this emulator to go online through Wi-Fi. After you enable direct mode, select your Ethernet adapter from the drop-down menu below. If you have multiple options, you can check which one you're using on the network status screen in your Windows system settings. Just note that VPNs can change this adapter, so if you're using one, you'll want to disable it while you check this. Even if you use a VPN while you use Melon DS, you'll still want it to connect to the default adapter used by your PC. Once everything is configured in the settings, go to File, Open ROM, and load up your game. Bring up the Nintendo WFC settings, then head into the Options menu on the right. If you have the option, erase your current Nintendo WFC configuration, and then restart the emulator. If it's already grayed out, then you're one step ahead of the game. Head back to the WFC setup menu, then into the Wi-Fi connection settings on the left. Click into connection 1, then hit search for an access point. Select Melon AP, then sit back and watch as the first test fails. To fix this, go back into connection 1, and then scroll down to auto-obtain DNS and disable this option. Now change both the primary and secondary DNS to one of the addresses shown on screen. Just make sure that the primary and secondary match each other, then hit test connection. If you configured everything correctly, you should be able to connect successfully. So just save your settings and you're ready to get online. Just keep in mind that your mileage may vary with this feature, and if you continue having problems, check out the Wi-Fi thread on the Melon DS website linked below for some more information on common issues. You can also feel free to drop a comment below, or join my Discord channel for additional support. So that should be just about everything that you need to know in order to get Melon DS up and running to its fullest. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and be sure to check out the links to the Melon DS website below. And if you're into this sort of thing, get subscribed to my channel to keep seeing tutorials like this, along with monthly update recaps for your favorite emulators, and more. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.